this particular um, origin, uh, or the origin of this particular position of this hand gesture, uh, dates back to um, approximately the 12th century, and uh, during the Battle of Agincourt, which was uh, part of the 100 Years' War, um, the French and the English were uh, fighting each other, and the French outnumbered the British. And they um, uh, would, when they captured a British soldier, they would cut off these two fingers, which were um, the, the fingers that archers mm -hmm. would use to strike their bow. Yeah. And so um, effectively mutilating them and making them unable to fight for the enemy. So um, if you jump up a couple of hundred years, Francois Rabelais in the 16th century wrote about this, it described this, this gesture for the first time mm -hmm. um, in literature. And then if you jump up a, another 500 years or so, you get to um, the, the, the sort of common usage of, uh, of it in Britain, in the UK, um, in particular in Western Europe, it started to be used as, again, grievous insult. But uh, the first positioning, the, the first usage of uh, the hand gesture this way has a date attached to it, which is um, January 14, 1941. There was a uh, uh, Belgian lawyer by the name of <coughs> um, De Lavale, Victor De Lavale, and he was in um, occupied Britain as a refugee from Belgium, and he was um, wanting to unify the all all people under occupied in occupied countries uh, in allied countries during the Nazi occupation, and so he had been noticing in London that they had been using RAF, the Royal Air Force um, initials, to try and unify mm -hmm. people and thought, well, that's not getting people from various languages, so he came up with victory. Um, because in Flemish, it's virhad, or in my pronunciation, it's, it's poor, or victoire in French, and victory in English. And so he went on to the BBC, actually, and announced that this would be something that they could do to uh, <coughs> uh, effectively tell their oppressors that they didn't want to be under their regime anymore. And uh, eventually, uh, Sir Winston Churchill, about six months later, in September of that year, took it up publicly, and it became a, a very effective um, tool against the Germans. They, the, German, um, the, the Germans actually tried to co-opt it at some point around that time, but they couldn't because it was very it was very much associated by that point as an anti-Nazi sign. And then in the 60s, the, the, the pacifist movement took it on as a, um, a symbol of peace. So mm -hmm. again, it changes in meaning. And then, uh, which is kind of interesting because they would, in the US, they would use the reverse to um, uh, defy authorities. Mm -hmm. So it sort of has that duality again in the peace movement. So yeah. So this is victory? This is victory. Um, victory peace. with palm facing forward and palm facing back. It's okay, this insults. It's it means that there's a variety of meanings. It could mean a woman's legs, it could mean a penis, it could mean copulation. It's all kinds of different But according to this uh, medieval story that's uh that part. This would be um, defiance against the oppressor again to say, look, I've got my two so the, fingers. The British were. Yeah. Not the French from the American. No, no, no. The British were saying, look, I got my two fingers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And are you still thinking of uh, breaking one off? No, I'm not actually. I decided to keep it the way it is. I was going to at one point have it on its side <coughs> as well, but. Yeah, we're just reaching detailing, so... So how did this come about, that you wanted to make a big stone sculpture? Um, well, I've been interested in uh, body language and gesture in particular, um, hand signals in particular, as being uh, a silent language that requires, uh, relies on the 
on sight and silence and also cultural context and how all of those things if you, if you don't have those things you're mis you're not comprehending what's happening <coughs> with that with that kind of language so um, that was the initial impetus for this and I was looking at a variety of body gestures or hand gestures this can mean both positive and negative has both positive and negative connotations as does this um, and then I was thinking about the impact of, of a peace symbol today and how that um, was interesting to me, <coughs> how we need it, <laughs> but also that, that it is um, an oxymoron. And um, the idea of doing it, making a monument out of it, um, immediately I was thinking about stone and um, it, that you know, seems slightly anachronistic to me, making a, a stone sculpture today, um, and you need a skilled worker and somebody who knows what they're doing, skilled, skilled craftsmanship. And so, yeah, it brought up a whole set of um, issues and pretty interesting. So 